Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Margaret, also known as Seven Plaza here and on Instagram. And today is day 47 of the 100 day project. And 47 is my favorite number, so I'm really excited for this project. As you can see, there is no prototype, just vintage yummy ephemera. Uh, and I want to use this today. What I want to make with you is an envelope folio flip up thingy. I don't know what it's called. It's going to be good. Um, the inspiration for this came from Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. She made a tutorial a couple of years ago, I believe two years ago. Mind you, that was three videos long. I'm going to do a very basic, simple one um, in one video, hopefully. Uh, at that time I made a couple of them and still this is my absolute favorite project she has ever made on her channel. Um, so I have high hopes for this one. Let me show you what we're going to use today. Besides this yummy ephemera, um, let's take out the basic things that we need. Uh, things that you might all have. Uh, I am using two large envelopes, the smaller, taller ones. And then a normal one, and I have an itty bitty one. I have like, this is like, what is it? A coin bag? I don't know. Small bag. Um, and I want to use some real vintage ephemera, but you don't have to use this. I also printed out some scans and such of invoices and antique letters um, to cover the envelopes with. Of course, we're going to need uh, scissors and glue and a ruler, just, you know, the basic stuff. Let's get started. Let me give you sort of an idea what we're making. I want to attach these two envelopes together, like so. So you have like a folio thingy. And then I want to use this envelope to cover the whole bit to have like sort of a flap here and there and they will be pockets and on the inside I want the baby envelope to go over here so you can flip this up and I want the, the coin envelope uh, to go over here to flip this up right yeah that is the idea um, but what we need to do is cover all the parts with beautiful paper I have printed out uh, some invoices and letters I found these uh, on Pinterest, they are from the old design shop and the graphics fairy and I also have some of my own um, but I already had these at hand so I'm going to use these to cover them up. These envelopes are white white and you know I do not like white white. Uh, what you can do is uh, cover them and then later ink the edges but I find it much easier to ink the edges uh, before you um, glue something on. So that is what I will do. I will not use a dark a color for this. I am going to use probably vintage photo, maybe some tea dye. And I want to ink this one as well. And then the one that goes around, where is it? Well, I'll find it. There you go just all around the edges on the inside and on the outside. I will not bore you with this. So I will do this off camera and I'll be right back. Almost all of the inking is done. I wasn't careful or anything because we're gonna cover almost every piece of it. Um, I also did this uh, envelope and then I was like, how am I going to ink this? Well, um, like so, and I thought I, I want to show you, I just put a normal piece of paper in and I got these sort of makeup brushes out and then I'll ink them like so, which is much easier than putting your hand in. And so a faster solution to that. We have to close this envelope. Where is it? The medium one. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna trust the glue part that is on here. I am going to trust my own glue. So I'm gluing this part down just around these edges and I want to open a piece up I know I just um, inked it <laughs> so we have to ink it again but that's okay taking out my knife you just need a sliver just to make an opening I 
like so. And of course, inking it again. And there you are. Because this is going to be a pocket later on. I thought about making a pocket here, but uh, it already has so many pockets, I don't think it will need one more. Good. Be before I put these um, two envelopes together, uh, I want to cover uh, some other pieces first. We need to know where we're going to put what where. This is going to go over here. So it needs to be glued on before we um, uh, put the paper on here because I want this to disappear. And then um, these are going to go on the outside, so that's no problem. I also have a little bag here. I need to recycle it. I, this came with some of my orders. It had some beautiful stuff on it. I took the stuff off. <laughs> um, and I want to attach this here, I guess, and then do a flip up. I'm going to make a bigger indentation because otherwise you cannot get some stuff out. So before I put some paper here, I need to glue this down, this part. Yeah? Okay. Makes sense? I think it will. Before I'm gluing these two down, I am going to decorate them. So let's do that first. So before I start gluing, I want to make uh, this opening a little bit bigger. Also, I did not ink this one because it already has a lovely color. I want to have it like a, a little bit more of an oval circle thingy. I um, don't have a punch that big. So I am using the lid of one of my pretty, pretty cans. Let's see if this is at all straight. Well, you know, sort of. I'm just going to draw a line. There you go. I could take out my scissors. Um, but I find this to be much more effective. I'm putting a piece of cardstock in. And then taking out, flip it. This is an absolute treasure. Um, recommend this. This is called a swivel knife. It's by Fiskars. It, it's like drawing a line with a pencil. Putting not a lot of pressure because I do not want to cut through the cardstock as well. Unfortunately, the cardstock doesn't cover the whole bit, so moving it over. Put a little bit more pressure here because there's another piece of paper on here. Is it work now? Only this bit. Come on, you can do it. And voila! See? Trick. Another trick. Um, because I want to cover this bit and I really want to cover it, not like straight, I want to have the circle in here as well. So what I want to do, I want to cover this piece on here. Do I do need this piece? Yes. So first I want to cut it to size. Let's have it like over here. Hopefully this is straight, probably isn't, but we'll see. And then I also want to cut it to size at the other side, of course. I'm leaving a little bit of an edge, just a tiny bit. Normally I would leave a bit more of an edge. Well, I'm going to have it over here. Do not eat my paper trimmer. There you go. But we want to have this mark um, here. So oh, what are we going to do? I'm going to put it in. Hopefully it will fit. 
that's why I wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Also, if you hear my doorbell ring, don't be alarmed. I'm waiting on a package. It is too big. Go all the way to the bottom, please. No, need to make it smaller. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. There's probably a much better way to do this. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Now it ate my paper. That's okay. That will make it more authentic. Yes, we're there. There's probably a much faster way to do this. Um, oh, and now my hand is shaking. Good thing I have an eraser. See? Now I just need scissors. I'll use some tiny ones. Well, this is the way I do it. So there's probably a much better way. But hey. See? It fits now. I do want to erase this bit. Yep. Before I glue it down I want to ink it especially this bit that was torn but that's actually really nice because this is supposed to be old I am not gonna um, ink all the pieces on camera and glue down all the pieces on camera I just wanted to show you what I did with this one so you can sort of see how I go about doing things yep blue book somewhere otherwise this video will also be like three videos long <laughs> To this edge. See? More glue. Hopefully I was in frame. Like so. The same principle I'm going to do with this part. Just going to put the piece of paper in and then trace it, glue it on, on and on. I'll do that off camera. I'll be right back. So, I have glued all the pieces on, we did this on camera, this is on the other side, with a cute little piggy, and then this envelope with the same method, I just put a piece of paper inside, traced it, and then cut it out and glued it on, and this is on the other side, and I also did the um, envelope that's going to wrap around the whole thing, this is on the front, and this is on the back. Now, what I did, I cut out um, all the pieces for the bigger envelopes. And um, these will be on the inside and these will be on the outside. We will also be needing a smaller piece. You could do that, you could also ink it. Uh, but I think I'd like to put another piece of paper in between here so you won't see the white. So this will be in between, but there's a trick for that. I will show you later. Uh, for now, I first want to attach the smaller envelopes in the spots that we wanted to have them. This one was going to be over here, and this one was going to be over here. Right? Yeah. So, gluing them on. Using regular... Um, glue stick 
I will not put the whole thing flush against the other envelope. Just leave a little bit of room. Uh, that helps with folding the flap over. So it will stick out a little bit, but that's just what I like. So no problem there. Same principle over here. Gluing it down. Not flush against the other envelope. Leaving a couple of millimeters. There you go. Over here. Now what we can do is um, put a piece over here and then put a piece over here because we've glued these things on. This is the back part of the whole thing that is going to be this one. I already cut them to size and I inked them. So this will glue, be glued onto this part and this will be glued onto this part. Right? Yes, I'm going to do that. I have glued down all the bits on the big um, envelopes. I glued the inside and the back and this inside and then this will be the cover this will be the front right and now i want to put this piece on the inside there's just going to be a little bit showing of this but still i want there to be something instead of nothing um, so i'm gonna glue this first to one half of it to one side I am going to tuck it in, not a lot, just a tiny bit. This is the, a tricky part. No wrinkles please, thank you. Now it's very hard for this part to slide into this part. So what I will be doing is cutting off these corners. So it will be much easier to slide in. See? Trick. <laughs> it's not trick. But um, there's no glue on it now and there will be glue on it. <laughs> so that is a little bit more trickier. Gluing it down. I am going to have a small, small signature in this. Just a couple of pages. This is tricky. Hopefully it will work. Slide a little bit more envelope, you can do it. Yes. I want to let this dry before I fold it over. As you can see, this is now on the, on the outside. Um, you, I could have glued this underneath here, of course, I could have done that, but I want this to be a side tuck. So I am going to have this bit on here, so the George also continues, because <laughs> I was very sad to lose that part. I'm going to glue this on here, uh, but first I want to have it dry so we can fold it a little bit better. I think it's dry now. So let's gently fold it. Like so. I'll use my bone folder for this. No wrinkles on the inside, no wrinkles on the inside. Perfect. Now I want this to be a tuck spot. So I already cut a piece to size. This is going to be a little bit bigger 
um, than the flap is because I want to flip it over. Yeah, I inked it on these three sides, not on this side because I'm going to flip it over and then I need to ink it again. Barbara did this a little bit different, but we don't need to have it everything the same. I'm going to do my own variation on things sometimes. But really, if you want to see a very good tutorial, uh, go visit Barbara's um, channel. I don't know for sure if I can do the linking of the videos uh, below in the description box. I will try. Otherwise, let me have a quick look because I have it here. It is from March 2020. Just um search on her channel for envelope junk journal flip thingy <laughs> you'll find it you'll find it so i'm flipping it over like so and that reinforces it and also makes this part straighter like so uh, before i glue it down i will ink this part If you want to have a bigger tuck spot, you could also um, use a bigger piece of paper and then make it longer. I thought this would be quite enough. Come on glue, you can do it. There we go, this part and this part. I will be needing some assistance for this. One over here. And one over here. Why? Why is this happening? This also needs to be glued down very well. But it doesn't want to. Well, it's going to be okay because this is also going to go over it. I am going to fold this in half. Like so. This is going to cover this bit. So I'm going to tuck something in here. And the pocket was on the front. I am going to clip something onto this. Um, Barbara used a sewing machine. Well, good for you, Barbara. <laughs> I don't have a sewing machine. Um, what I want to do is have a small signature in it and then use the um, pamphlet stitch thingy. And that will attach this to the journal as well. And I think I want to have the stitching on the outside. So what I want to do now is make a quick small signature this is the little signature that i have put together i've used some real ledger paper yes i am using my ledger paper um, and i made a flap you can journal on here this is um, a receipt it's also vintage very old because the telephone number has only five digits and then this is also ledger paper that's a little bit more modern, but I really like the colors with the other paper. And this is a German sort of, um, what's it called? Receipt. And this is also a beautiful old from 1956, some sort of a small letter. I don't read French, but it was pretty so that's the signature and let's put it all together again and that is gonna go in here and then we're also gonna gonna attach this piece 
So that is sort of part of the signature almost. Using my big paper clips to hold it all together. Work with me paper clip. That's my embroidery floss that I'm gonna use. Hopefully it will hold this piece as well. It doesn't hold this piece. But it does now. So it's holding everything into place. Am I happy with it? Yes. No, this needs to be a little bit higher. Yep, yes. Pokey tool. I'm not gonna go all the way up there. I'm just gonna concentrate it uh, on this part. So I'm just gonna attach it here. Not all the way to the edge, please. Here's one. Then the upper part. There you go. Here's one, and then one sort of in the middle. And that is three. Big needle. Using my embroidery floss for this. I have this new threader thingy. It is vintage. It's a needle threader. It's old. And it also can be used for sewing machines. If I ever had a sewing machine. There you go. Starting in the middle. Leaving a bit on the edge. And then going in here. There you go. Moving it all the way over to the top. Yes, and then the tricky bit, putting it back into the middle hole again without touching the embroidery floss that is already in there. One thread uh, on this side and one thread on this side and have this in the middle. Tighten it. And then double knotting. Double nothing? No, double knotting. <laughs> There you go! Voila! One signature. That is so cool. Let's see how much time we have left because I want to do some other things to it that make it even more beautiful. Yes, we have more time. Um, that's what I said like two minutes ago and then I <laughs> forgot to start the video. The only thing I did was put this eyelet in because this is going to be our closure. I have some nice goodies um, and some beautiful vintage ephemera. This is a very old envelope. I have no idea from when because I, I, I have no clue. I don't know, but it's old. I already put in some beautiful vintage ephemera as well. Very old. Look at that. Yes, lovely. What I want to do is attach this to this piece. And I do not mind that you see it because that is lovely paper. So I'm gonna glue this on there. I'm not going to make it into a tuck spot or anything because this paper is so very thin and so very old. Um, I do not want to compromise it in any way. Oop. 
Oops, there goes my glue. I want to glue it on, but not flush to the edge. Otherwise you cannot open and close it very well. There you go. Putting in the beautiful pieces. In there, I want to put something in here. I found a very old um, uh, business card from an antique bookseller in Stratford upon Avon. An antiquarian. Well, that's nice. And I thought, uh, why not have like something like this on it? So that you can pull it out. Fold it in the middle, Margaret. Fold it in the middle. I am finally using some of the stuff that I have been hoarding for like ever. I am going to ink it. Not much, just a bit. And you could my journal on the back because it's blank on the back. I mean, this is not antique or anything, uh, but it was in a box that I found at an antique market with all sorts of things in it. So I thought, well, it's probably old. It's vintage anyway, for sure. Just using my glue stick on my mat, as usual. Robert Vaughn. Isn't that also an actor? Let me know, Robert Vaughn. Hmm, rings a bell. So, this goes in here. There you go, already had some on here. I need to put something in here, but I do not have anything that is tall and small. Does this one fit? Ooh, no, it doesn't. That's too bad. Now I cannot get it out, of course. Shall we snip it? Yes. We shall snip it. <laughs> That's Jewish for snip it. <laughs> we shall snip it. Now it should work. There we go. I want to put something on here. Um, I had these tiny cards. Yeah. These are just a bigger um, prints that I printed out on a 92 page. So they're nice, no, nice and small. I already inked around them. Just like so, as a little bit of decoration. And here's the signature. Also have a beautiful envelope. This is an envelope made from this ledger paper that was gifted to be, me by my friend Leonie. She made this for me. Thank you, Leonie, sweetheart. And I want to glue this on the inside. like so so you have another spot here to put things in like this this is french there's no date on it you have something else this doesn't fit mm. nope i want to put a label on here of course you want to put a label on there Again, in the brown color. Oops. I'm gluing it on my glue book, which is on the side. Because there's no more room on my desk. Let's have this over here. Lovely. And I want to put this um, over here. A sort of flap thingy. But I do want to stamp on it, of course. Do we have something with numbers? <laughs> we probably do. And 
some ink. Need to put something underneath. Numbers. Hopefully you can see it, but there's just some numbers on here. That makes it just a tiny bit more interesting for me. And then it works like a frame. There you go. I will also, I have more of these that I printed out. And I think I might like to add them. Oh, I made such a mess. I'll put this one in for sure. Do we have some more? Yeah, but I want this one to be glued down here, I guess. Or here, peeking out. Yes, peeking out over there. See, decorating is the nice part. There we go. Flip, flip. I was thinking maybe we could also put a flippy thing on here. Like so. Yeah, then have another number on it. There's room for a number, I guess. Yep, there is. How cute is that? Yes, love it. Flippy thingy. Sure. Because we have one more. Yes, flippies, flippies, flippies. I'm going to put some beautiful stuff in here. Like this is like, I don't even know. It's a punch card of some sort that goes in here. And I printed this out. You can journal on it. And then this is a beautiful vintage postcard. Very old. Look at the writing, 1896. Yeah, well, there you go, 1896. Good. Uh, do we have something in these pockets? Not yet. So I have this, Republic of France. Is there a date on it? 1964. Another sort of journaling card that I printed out. I'll also go in here have some room in here these are unfortunately too big oh how beautiful is this that is so cool and it's lined with like I don't know uh, cheesecloth or anything like that I am not going to um, glue it on I am going to attach it with a paper clip a tiny one there you go. Yep. Now I was going to attach something here. And this is also. Let's see if I have something that is smaller. That is big. Will this paper clip work? Probably won't. But I also have like uh, Tim Holtz tiny ball clip thingies. Yes. Hopefully that will work. Stay, stay on here. Yes. Some Baker's twine. Uh, 
Um, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> you need to cut it first, love. Okay, well, I'm going to cut it first. I'm sorry. You need to cut it first. And then this go. Oh, hopefully I'm in frame. I'm sorry. This goes through here. And this whole bit goes through here. Yep. And then you spin it all around. And you can tie it here or just put it here. And that is what I'm going to do. Let's see the end result. It is finished. And we have time for a little flip through. I added a couple more things. I added a number here. And then this is a, a ticket by Tracy Fox. And when we open it up. There is this card. The, what was it called? A business card for Robert Vaughn. There you go. And when we open it up, there's a beautiful old envelope over here. I love this paper. It's a little bit see-through. There's some vintage ephemera in here. Some old pieces of paper. I put a stamp here because sometimes these receipts had a stamp. I have no clue why that is for, but that happens. And then when we open it up, you can flip this up. And there's a journaling card in here that is a print of something and then i decorate it here inside there is another journaling card that i printed and beautiful french ephemera from 1964. what i also did was decorate the signature just for a little bit i added a tab here so you can open it up. I added some hole reinforcers in the same color yellow because I liked the yellow in the lines here. Some decoration. This is a talk, tiny talk spot with some ephemera. And then I have some decoration here. I love the blue. It corresponded with this blue. Did nothing to this. It's from 1956. Added a label. This is a, a vintage envelope. A very small one and this is from AliExpress just a piece of paper I liked it and a nice card all best wishes with roses because that looked so nice peeking through the window then there's a label here and some decoration here and then we arrive at this point I have some vintage ephemera in here this is um, German very old has a nice nice gothic font on it this back and then this envelope that flips up like so with some beautiful ephemera in it as well this is also french and old and then you can flip this up inside this beautiful small envelope are some more of these pieces that you can maybe decorate some other pages with i did change out this envelope i had it at the top but i didn't like it because i wanted to see this image so i changed it around to the other side and when we close it on this side there's this beautiful nice a, a big sturdy tag it's from the royal army this is original this is not a print or anything i attached it with the tim hall's tiny pull clip and then inside is a postcard from 1896, so old. I printed this and this is like a punch card and then the envelope is stuck on here. It's beautiful. I love this. This is embossed. You can feel this and it is very sturdy and lined with, I don't know, feels like a cheesecloth. So yeah. That's the whole project. I hope you liked it. I really enjoyed it. I am going to look at it again and again and again. Uh, because I love it. Hope you liked it guys. And I will see you tomorrow for day 48. Bye bye.